Today we are going to start a new story, The Monkey and the Crocodile. It is derived from Panchatantra. So let us start the story, The Monkey and the Crocodile. The Monkey and the Crocodile is derived from Panchatantra. Panchatantra also spelled Panchatantra. Collection of Indian animal fables which has had extensive circulation both in the country of its origin and throughout the world. In Europe, the work was known under the name The Fables of Bitpai for the narrator and Indian sage Bitpai called Vidyapati in Sanskrit. And one virgin reached the West as early as the 11th century. In the theory, the Panchatantra is intended as a textbook of Niti, means policy, especially for kings and statesmen. Their porism tends to glorify shrewdness and cleverness rather than altruism. The origin text is a mixture of Sanskrit prose and stanzas of verse with the stories contained within one of the five frame stories. The introduction which acts as an enclosing frame for the entire work attributes the story to a learned Brahman named Vishnu Sharman who used the form of the animal fables to instruct the three dull-witted sons of a king. The original Sanskrit work now lost may have come into being at any time between 100 BC and AD 500. It was translated into Pallavari Midden Persian by the Persian royal physician Barjoi in the 6th century. Although this work also is lost, a Sarek tra translation of it has survived, together with the famous Arabic translation by Ibn al Mukfa, known as. Kaliya Wah Dimna After the two jackals that figure in the first story, the Kaliya Wah Dimna led to the various other virgins, including a second Syriac virgin and an 11th century virgin in Greek. The Stephanites K. Ichnilates, from which translation were made into Latin, and various Slavic languages. It was the 12th century Hebrew version of Rabbi Joel, however, that becomes the source of most European version. The 17th century translation, the Humayun Namah, was based on the 15th century Persian Virgin. The Anwar A. Suyali, the Panchatantra's stories also travelled to Indonesia through old Javanese written literature and possibly through oral virgin. In India, the Hitu Padesha, good advice composed by Narayan in the 12th century and circulated mostly in Bengal appears to be an independent treatment of the Panchatantra material. The Panchatantra is a legendary collection of originally Indian animal fables in verse and prose. Some scholar believes that the original text of the Panchatantra in Sanskrit was written probably in 3rd century BC by a great Hindu scholar Pandit Vishnu Sharma. Some 
etymologist suggests that the term panchatantra is a combination of two sanskrit words pancha and tantra pancha means five and tantra means system of parts panchatantra refers to a collection of the specially composed tales divided into five tantras of how to deal with the people in life the five principles that are highlighted in panchatantra are mitra bheda mitra samprati kakulukyam labdha pranasam apri kishtha karakam the panchatantra is essentially based on one of the branches of science known by the indians as the niti shastra meaning a book of wise conduct in life in sanskrit the panchatantra is woven round the frame of the tale of a king he entrusts his three sons to learn code brahmin called pandit vishnu sharma to enrich their minds with moral values and governing skills within a time span of 6 months the brahmin promised to educate them and takes them to his ashrama there he recited to them his specially composed tale came to known as panchatantra however the story hold valid credit in showing the mankind in the general the ways to understand people to choose reliable and trustworthy friends to meet difficulties and solve problems with tact and wisdom and to live in peace and harmony in the face of the hypocrisy decreed and many pitfalls of life So let's start the story the monkey and the crocodile it is derived from panchatantra It is the story of clever monkey and a crocodile who became friends however this friendship was short lived as the monkey realized the evil intention of the crocodile to kill him in the middle of the stream in disguise of inviting him for a meal yet the monkey's presence of mind help him to convince the croc that he has left his heart back back in the tree and needs to return to get it back as soon as he reached the bank he climbed the tree and disappeared the story teaches us not to trust anyone blindly This story gives a message that we should not trust any but anyone blindly. We must think before taking any decision. This message has been conveyed through a friendship drama between a monkey and a crocodile. This is story of friendship between a monkey and a crocodile. A monkey lived alone in a fruit-laden tree on a river bank. He was very happy. but used to feel lonely he wanted to have someone to talk to one day a crocodile came near that tree the monkey offered him fruit to eat the crocodile found it delicious and started coming daily soon they became very good friend they both liked each other's company they discussed everything around them like birds animals villagers and their problems their closeness grew day by day the crocodile did not just eat the fruit himself but also carried some fruits for his wife but his wife didn't like his friendship with the monkey she expressed a wish to eat the monkey's heart to keep his wife's word he invited his friend monkey to have dinner with him while taking the monkey to his home he told him the truth about his wife's wish hearing that monkey asked the crocodile to return back to the river 
as he had forgotten his heart on the tree. The crocodile swam back and reached the river bank. Monkey quickly jumped onto the tree and threw some fruit to the crocodile and bid goodbye to the crocodile. A monkey lived in a fruit tree on the bank of river. He made a friends with a crocodile, gave him delicious fruits to eat and sent some of his wife. They met regularly and talked. The monkey in the tree and the crocodile on the ground. Now here are a few points which is based on this story. So now I am going to read. Once on the bank of river, a monkey made a home for himself in a tree laden with fruit. He lived in it the happily eating to his heart's contain the fruits of his choice. The monkey was happy but lonely and wanted a companion to talk to and share the fruits with. But there was no around, no one around, not even another monkey, till one day a crocodile appeared on the riverside. Hello, dear, said the monkey. Do you like, do you live in this river? Hello, dear, said the monkey. Do you live in this river? Would you like to eat some fruit? Good morning, replied the crocodile politely. I did come here in search of food for myself and my wife. Nice of you to offer me fruit. Now I am going to explain. A monkey lived on a tree laden with fruit. He was able to have fruits as per his heart's desire. He didn't have any friends to talk to. So he used to feel lonely because no one was living over there. One day a crocodile came on the riverside. Monkey asked him if he lived in that river that if he would like some fruit. The crocodile softly wished him good morning and told him that he came there in search of food for himself and his wife. The crocodile also expressed his gratitude for offering him fruit. The monkey plucked some from the nearest branch and threw them down. The crocodile Found them delicious. Thanks, he said. May I have some on my next visit? Certainly, as many as you like and some for your wife too, said the monkey. Do come again. I am rather lonely here. The crocodile visited the monkey regularly and ate the fruits which his host Threw, the, threw down. He took some home for his wife. The monkey and the crocodile were now the best of friends. They talked and were never tired of talking. They talked about birds and animals, about the villagers nearby and the difficulties villagers faced in the raising good crops for lack of rain. The monkey plucked and threw some fruits to the crocodile. The crocodile found it very tasty, thanked the monkey for it and asked if he could have fruit on his next visit too. The monkey assured that he could have as much fruit as he wished. He also asked him to visit again. The crocodile started visiting him daily. He used to eat the fruit thrown by the monkey and used to take some home for his wife as well. 
they both became good friend they talked endlessly they talked about birds and animals and their surroundings about villagers and their problems and their challenges in raising good crops because of the less rain they were continuously talking about the circumstances around them in the next part of the story we can find few points the crocodile wife was annoyed because her husband came home late she didn't like his friendship with the monkey the crocodile could not altogether ignore his wife's wishes one day the crocodile stayed with the monkey longer than usual his wife was annoyed waiting and waiting for managing the little crocodiles that had just been hatched she said who is this friend of yours you are so fond of oh he is a very nice monkey he replied he lives on a fruit tree he sends fruit for you every day you don't expect me to climb trees do you hatched means hatched means process of emergence of young baby from an egg process of process of emergence of young baby from an egg that is called hatched one day the crocodile got later than usual to be with her monkey than usual his wife got angry for waiting and managing the little crocodiles all alone she asked him who was the friend whom he loved so dearly now here you can find the wife of crocodile was getting angry and jealous also little bit jealous also the crocodile replied that he was a monkey and he lived on a fruit tree it was he who gave him fruit every day oh he is very nice monkey he replied he lives on a fruit tree he sends fruit for you every day you don't expect me climb trees do you now here he he said that he lives on the tree and he always send me fruits for you also and don't expect me that i will climb on the tree because i am a crocodile oh a nice monkey i am sure replied the life with obvious scarism if you ask me this monkey should be my food i want to eat his heart so much what a foolish thing to say shouted the crocodile i can't kill a friend though i want mind a monkey occasionally go i want mind a monkey occasionally for a change of taste now here the crocodile got angry his wife replied scarcely that the monkey was nice and she wished to make that monkey her food the crocodile shouted in anger and said that he could not kill a friend though for a change of taste he could 
have a monkey to eat. You bring him here, ordered the wife. I want to see him. So you can't, can eat him? Never, declared her husband. His wife was furious and she dived in into the hide herself at the bottom of the river, leaving the little ones to pester their father. Now here you can see the word is pester. Pester, pester means to irritate someone by asking something repeatedly. To irritate someone by asking something something repeatedly this is the meaning of pester now here you can find his wife asked him to bring the monkey to her the crocodile refused because the monkey was his friend the crocodile refused, which angered the wife. She plunged into the river, leaving the children to trouble the father. The crocodile was in serious dilemma. He loved his wife and was very fond of his friend too. Finally, he decided to be on the side of his wife. She was his life partner after all. I know it's a sin to betray a friend, but I have no choice, he said to himself. I'll invite the monkey home and hope for the best. Now here you can see the new word is dilemma. Dilemma means to be or not to be situation where one has to make a difficult choice. To be or not to be. And you can say in the simple word there is a confusion. Situation. where one has to make a make a difficult choice choice that is called dilemma to be or not to be Situation where one has to make a difficult choice. The crocodile was in difficult situation as one side. It was his dear wife. He loves too much his wife. And on the other side, it was his beloved friend. But in the end, the crocodile thought to be on his wife's side. After all, the wife was his partner, life partner. He thought that she was his life partner. Though it was a sin to cheat a child, he had no choice. And therefore, he decided to invite his friend. Now here you can see the dilemma of the mind when the crocodile was thinking about one side his beloved wife was there and the other side his beloved friend was there and that dilemma 
the wife one now here you can see my wife wants you over for a meal dear friend said the crocodile when he visited the monkey next you must come home with me today with pleasure said the monkey i am no swimmer but can ride on your back as they set out the crocodile visited the monkey and invited him home the monkey accepted his invitation with a pleasure and said that he was not a swimmer but he could ride on the crocodile back instantly he decided to ride on his back and instantly he got ready to visit the house of the crocodile because they were the best friend they were uh, talking with each other they were passing the time with each other so instantly he got ready now here you can see in the middle of the river where the current was the strongest the crocodile could no longer hide his intention sorry my friend he said has a stingly but i have to go under water now i have brought you here to kill you my wife cannot survive without eating your heart goodbye now in this paragraph you can see the turning point of this story both of them started their journey and in the middle of the river where the flow of the water was very strong the crocodile could not hide what he had in his mind he was sad and he wanted to share the you can say a mystery why he brought him here so what he had in in his mind he wanted to share he wanted to disclose so he disclosed to the monkey that he had brought him to kill him and for this he had to go under water now his wife was unable to survive without eating the monkey's heart so he asked sorry and bid him goodbye he was repenting that he was going to do a wrong thing it was a sin but he was helpless because his wife was asking the heart of monkey and without the hearts of the monkey she could not live so he asked sorry and bid him goodbye now let's move to the next part of the story the monkey was thunderstruck he knew his wife was in danger the theme of the story the monkey and the crocodile explore the friendship betrayal an estrangement greed and also has a moralistic edge to it the monkey generously plucked ripe golden mangoes for the crocodiles and his wife and threw them down to him daily without the expectation of anything in return in the next part of the story we will find in the end the crocodile gave way to his wife's wish he reached the river bank he told the monkey that his wife had in- invited him over for a meal the monkey accepted the invitation he rode the go- crocodile's back and reached the middle of the river 
There the crocodile told the monkey that his wife would eat his heart. The monkey asked the crocodile to carry him back to bring his heart from the tree. The crocodile got trapped. He swam back and reached the river bank. The monkey jumped onto the tree. He bade the crocodile goodbye forever. The crocodile was sad on losing a friend. He shed real tears. So this is a story, next part of the story. We will study in the next video. So till then, take care. Bye-bye.